Hello, hello, hello. This is Don Sketchcast, episode 36, and I am Don. No guest this week, just me. Isn't that exciting? Aren't you happy? It's nice when we have a guest. It's nice when we don't have a guest. I'm going to be drawing today. I'm going to be drawing and working on a portrait of the Dead King, part two. Because part one, for those of you who are watching, and I highly encourage you all to watch this. This is definitely a visual show. Um, you'll miss out on things if you don't watch it. You can obviously listen to this on iTunes and Spotify. Shout out to you iTunes and Spotify listeners who I imagine you're drawing. I hope you're drawing. Maybe you're not drawing. Maybe you just like the sound of my voice. That's fine too. That's okay. Maybe you just like hearing the nice information that comes through this program. But I'm going to show you all in Photoshop what this uh, portrait looked like before. Some of you bought this print. Uh, it's no longer available. But I'm going to be continuing it. And it's going to take a while. It's going to take a long time. Uh, long for me is like six hours. So I don't know what that means. That might be six episodes. It might be longer than that. But I'm just going to keep chipping away at this until I know that it's done. And I'm going to force myself to sort of stick with it longer than I usually stick with things. In the meantime, while I'm drawing and remaining, uh, keeping my composure, trying to stay coherent while I'm doing the visual thing, because it's tough to, uh, sometimes it's tough to hold your brain in the in the process of broadcasting and drawing at the same time. That's that's kind of one of my one of my skills that I'm trying to build up while you're listening to me. So I'm going to be focusing on answering a lot of your questions on this episode because there's a lot of a lot of them in the backlog, a lot of stuff that you guys have been asking about that I would like to address. Like to address your questions, some of your drawing challenges as well. Gonna see if I can get into that. Let's add a little bit to his scalp. I don't know. Oh man, that'd be the worst shape up. If this guy's if this guy's shape up was just hanging off <laughs> hanging off of his head. Fuck. Hmm. This right here, this guy I'm working on right now is, it's based on Chiron from Moonlight. Chiron from Moonlight. Uh, Moonlight is the movie, not Chiron from Moonlight. Chiron is the character, Moonlight is the movie. Very good movie. I made a video about that actually. I made a video about that film. And what it meant to me. I'm going to do a a basic outline. Since we're we're working with realism realism for the base, like what his head looks like. I'm going to see if I can't be uh faithful to that in my depiction of this character. You know, someday you'll be able to put animations on your walls, like print them out. Until then, I'm stuck with this. Mm -mm. Add some horns to this helmet. This here helmet. I'd like to know how you all are doing out there. In the comments below, how are you? What are you working on? Are you not working on anything? Do you just sit here and chill? I know last time we had some people, um, we had some interesting responses to that question, which I can check out right now, actually. The magic of the computer box. Interesting answers to what you all are doing while you're listening to this or watching it. And this was during the um, episode 35 was with Davi Go, the fantastic illustrator Davi Go. From Tunnel Vision, he says, uh, pretty good format you got going. Keep building on it. I do wish, though, I could still send you those distorted dancing fetus videos like old times. 
Uh, yeah, Tunnel Vision. I remember I remember you sending me those back when I used to do live draws, which will come back. Live draws will come back eventually. Julio Gomez says, I, re- I just recently got into your content. I remember seeing your name pop up in random YouTube comment sections, and only as of late that I put it all together that you were the dude that made that Death Grips Fantano video. Still, though, I think your authenticity is what attracts me to your content. Plus, you care about the arts and shit. Real Plus, you care about the arts and shit. Real positive, creative vibes. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, and this is one of my favorite ones from Smug Grog ninety eight. <laughs> that's a that's a funny funny username. Smug Grog ninety eight says, "A hey, long time lurker here. I am just one of those people that prefers to listen than talk, and that take and that kind of takes if that kind of affects how I am online too. So that." That's why I don't comment much. But yeah, I just enjoy the topics you discussed, like the nerd culture, art, creativity, etc., which give me some inspiration while I draw. Also, as a fellow black dude who is into nerdy and creative stuff, who doesn't really get to interact with people like that often, I just find it cool to listen to a black dude that talks about necromancy and gives music artists RPG classes. Yeah, I, I feel you. I mean, it's um, it's definitely rare. Like... It, we're basically a subculture within a subculture. Nerd culture is um, predominantly white in this country. And that's okay. That's cool or whatever. But I think there's there's definitely... There's definitely some interesting cultural overlap that happens when you talk to a black nerd. There's... There's a different quality. I mean, like, and I'm talking black American nerds, African nerds, like Caribbean people. You see, uh, there's a different quality to it, and I don't really know how to explain it. Um, if you're if you're part of that community, if you're a black person like myself, you you might understand what I'm talking about. It's like you're getting you're getting different cross sections. Let me make a <laughs> let me make a Venn diagram right on this drawing. All right, so you got it's like regular ass people right that's everybody everybody this is the math you uh you wish they would have taught you in school right so that's everybody on the fucking planet right and these are nerds let that equal nerds right and is it larger you know what i'm gonna go ahead and say this is actually let's make this a little larger and this is going to be accurate i've done all the tests all the studies right and those are those are the nerds now you zoom in enhance like ryan gosling and blade runner 2049 enhance actually he didn't say enhance that was harrison ford would would do the little enhance thing ryan gosling would just kind of wave his fingers around in the air wave his fingers around for the uh for that little, I don't know what the fuck you would call it. It's like a drone. It's like a sentient drone. Anyway, you zoom in. You zoom into the nerds. Within the nerds, okay. You got black nerds here. Actually, you know what? I'm going gonna make, I'm gonna to make black nerds <laughs> this. <laughs> black nerds. And I don't like saying blurds. I understand that's a thing. It's a blurred, blurred con. People call themselves blurred. I just don't. I have issues with labeling myself under um, certain demographics. I've always felt like I am who I am. I don't need to declare myself as black because everything I do is black. Like I am. It's just not something that I've ever felt like I need to really claim. Um, I, I also just don't like how blurred sounds. I know this sounds like this might sound like I'm contradicting myself, but I I'm I'm not like I understand the need for groups like that for because again like there's there's overlap there's a very big difference between blurred con and Otacon. the types of people you'll see there types of conversation you see happening and again cultural overlap right so I'm gonna explain this right here black nerds right here you get Hispanic nerds or whatever which is probably gonna be really close to this but within this. Within the, the the black nerd circle, you're gonna get 
you're going to get an overlap with black culture, with hip hop, whatever you consider black culture. Let's let that equal BC. Um, let's put a triangle here for no reason. <laughs> Let's put a let's put a circle and then a square and then an X. You're playing PlayStation all of a sudden. This is PlayStation now, motherfuckers. It's in the game. <laughs> no, that's EA Sports. PlayStation. What's the PlayStation uh slogan? Kiss my ass. No, no, that that's not it. That's not it. The PlayStation M more more life, more PlayStation. If any of you remember what the PlayStation slogan is, let me know in the comments below because I, I fucking forgot. Anyway, yeah, so that's in this realm. Uh, that's where I exist. I exist somewhere here. But even within this, you thought I was done. I'm not done. You zoom in more. And then you get this. Ooh. Now it's getting pixelated. Right? Pixelated. We're in a strange realm now. Because now we got black nerds who are into D and D and hip hop and anime and have had sex before. <laughs> you, you, know what I'm <laughs> you feel me? They've held hands with someone <laughs> consensually. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm fucking with you. But, like, within that, right, you got a very specific kind of nerd. And then, all right, so black, so right now, black person who's played D&D, &D, listens to hip-hop, can blend in with normie, normie black people. And within that, I would say I'm right here, right? These four pixels, that's me. Black nerd deals with all that shit, blah, 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 can can transfer over. I'm still within this. You see, we zoom out. I'm still within everybody, still within the nerds, but um, uh, kind of obsessed with death and art, very knowledgeable about death, YouTuber, talks too much, runs a podcast, is in your ears right now. That's what these four blocks mean. And you all, by the way, even if you're not a black nerd, you're you're right around here. If you're not a black nerd, you're you're walking through here. You know, like you're you're allowed in this circle. I'll allow you that. I mean, like when I when I have this circle here, it doesn't mean that you're like I think this this is really a demonstration of how I perceive subcultures. And again, you don't have to be black to be in here. I just this is really about how your your perception and consumption of culture and how much you are giving back to it as well in a positive way, in my opinion. How much you respect the culture and are, are um, championing what's good about it. Uh, and it just happens to be like, if you're black, you're always contributing. It's just kind of like an automatic, in my humble opinion. But yeah, that's me. That's me in the little, in the little pixel box. My art challenge for you all this week I just thought about it. I want uh, I want to see your diagram. If you have everybody, I'd like to see what it's like in your country, how you perceive yourself in nerddom, outside of nerddom, uh, as an art kid, are you not an art kid, that sort of thing. Let me know. Send send your little Venn diagrams or big Venn diagrams to ask at domrabron.com and I will look at them next fucking episode. That was fun, right? It's very nice. All right, let's add a little bit to this dead king. Um, this is kind of unfortunate because we're not gonna see. We're not gonna get to see under the helmet, really. God, he looks like he looks like uh, this fem this helmet looks like the helmet of gut or. Griffith from Berserk. I don't remember which one in particular, but one of them. It, it reminds me of that helmet. Now I'm going to expand this thing. going to expand this a little bit and then, yeah, that's a helmet right there. That's a helmet right there, boy. You got that helmet? 
Put that shit on. You get plus two magic, man. You want that plus two magic. All right. All right. Adding uh, these spindles. These little spindles and um, twigs to the helmet. You know, when I uh, first designed the Dead King, and for those of you who don't know, he's a persistent character in the DSC lore, the DSC universe, who you all will be getting to know a lot more in the future. That's all I'm going to say. I'm planning something out. The Dead King is one of the uh, main members of the Pantheon, and his thing is, he is, uh, his domain is, is with the dead. With the dead, and the dead for him is to me death means it's it's kind of a it's kind of a multi-layered word it doesn't just mean like the ending of human uh, of of a living life a living life it doesn't mean the end of a life uh in my opinion death is like it's it's an ending and it's sort of like when something is forgotten completely and i think things can be unforgotten which means things can be kind of resurrected. Which are, that's kind of what I'm what I'm playing with with this character, who's like a, a necromancer light. You have Nintendo DS light. You got a uh, necromancer light. All right. So I am. I like this shape right here we got going on. You see how this flows? This yellow. I'm sorry, this this black right here, underneath. This arm shape is coming off there, and it's kind of, we got some cool shapes going on. So I think at, at this point right now, we already have a base for something cool that is gonna be continuing later on. All right, got a few announcements, got a few live reads before we get into your questions, your requests, and your drawings. Bunch of fun shit that you guys sent in this week. Before we get into that, I want to remind you guys of a couple of things. Patreon.com slash valet is the place to be. It's really the cutting edge and the forefront of what's going to be the future for my content. It's the place where I post a bunch of secret shit. And it's the best way to support me, honestly, besides going to domrabbin.com slash shop, which I'll tell you guys about in a second. Patreon.com slash valet is the home for exclusive vlogs and videos that you will not see anywhere else on the internet. Exclusive shit. Shop discount. You can get anywhere from 5 to 20% off anything on my show. On my shop, whatever. Stuff you see on my uh, domrabbin.com slash shop. There are discount codes in patreon.com slash valet for each tier. You can get PSDs that you can alter, play with, send back, share with people on there. You get to see old cursed content from my sketchbook and my childhood that I will not dare show anywhere else on the internet. I even have stuff on there from uh like eighth grade and i plan on putting up something there for i found something in the uh, that i made in the fourth grade that i'll be putting up on there and it's really embarrassing i also put up on uh on patreon stories that i won't show anybody else uh short stories a few longer stories stuff like that for a certain tier you just got to look through the tiers to see what kind of what kind of um rewards you get on there you get to beta test Valet the Summoning on one tier and be a part of that. And that's a growing process, but it's going to be something really big. I'm excited to show you guys it. You're already seeing the beginnings of it. You're already seeing the beginnings of my plans by um, me having this back and forth with you all about sending you drawing challenges. You send them back. I send you guys things back and forth. It's in the alpha testing right now. Alpha, and then it's going to be beta, and then we're going to really just amp this up and make something really, really cool out of it. So you want to get into that early. You get to be part of the exclusive Valley Parking Chat, which is in the Discord. And if you guys aren't in the Discord already, if you don't know what Discord is, go in the show notes below and it's our collaborative chat room. It's our chat room with a bunch of valets and DSC watchers hang out. I'm in there occasionally. I, sh I show up probably like once a day. There's a general discussion chat. Um, Chandler does War, which is an awesome radio show. Uh, a couple times a week. There's this really cool channel called Art You Made on Discord. But Patreon... Patreon patrons have access to Valley Parking, which is a very secret chat where I check on it, um, again, once a day, and I can directly answer your questions. You can have a direct interaction with me. I'll chat with you, answer your questions. You can suggest people to come on the show, all that kind of shit. It's really awesome. 
And the last thing, the biggest thing right now that I want to uh, stress to you guys that I usually don't talk about is on the top tier on Patreon, the valet tier, for 25 bucks a month, you get entered into a raffle to get an original piece of art from me every three months. This is massively underpriced because my original art, this is stuff that's hand-drawn right out of my sketchbook, moleskin, uh, gouache, color pencil, ink, that kind of shit. I'll send these out one, uh, three, once every three months. So right now the cycle is about to start again. Uh, Asa James just got an original piece of art from it, and he's the only person in the valet tier right now. So again, this is massively, under, massively underpriced. The more people who are in the valet tier the more people who are going to have a chance to get it. But the less people who are in there, you see what I'm saying? If there are, if there are only two people in the Valley tier, 50% chance. This might increase in the future, but right now you want to get in on this to increase the chances of you getting this original piece of art. Original. I mean, this is the kind of shit that I would potentially charge people hundreds of dollars for. If someone just walked up to me and was like, I want to buy that from you. I'd probably say like 300 bucks, but you could get it for technically like 75 bucks. Which you'll be end up paying like twenty five every three months. I'm not a salesman. You know what I'm talking about. So, but you also get everything else. Whatever tier you're in, you get everything from the bottom tiers. So, I want to thank you guys for supporting me on there. Next thing, domrabbin.com/shop is where you can buy prints, apparel from me. I'm also testing out digital prints. If you guys go on there, check out the digital prints that I got going on. Uh, these are prints that you're allowed to print out yourself and hang up anywhere. You have full access to that, full rights to do that sort of thing. I'll also include little little stories, little blurbs, and little trinkets in it. You'll get a zip file, basically. These are way cheaper than the bigger prints that I sell, but you'll get a cool little zip file putting some stuff in there. And I'm testing this out. They're really cheap right now, so you want to go in there and check them out. And I would love to hear what you guys think about these things. I'm a sick fuck. I like a quick fuck. I'm a sick fuck. I like a quick fuck. I'm a sick fuck. I like a quick fuck. I'm a sick fuck. I like. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Motherfuckers. It's time. It's time to look at some of your drawings. And then we're going to look at. <laughs> it's my Wolverine impression. And then we're going to look at some of your questions and answer them. You feel me? All right. Uh, I had some cool drawings get submitted. This past week, um, we did a Mac DeMarco how to draw, how to draw video, which a lot of you commented on and supported and all that stuff. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. I got a couple Mac DeMarco drawings and I got a potato drawing. I don't remember where the potato drawing came from. Oh, right. It was a Tierra Whack video I did. But the first drawing we're going to look at is from Fetus Twinsies. Fetus Twinsies sent a nice, cute Mac DeMarco drawing and fulfilled the parameters on his Valley of the Summoning card. I will not forget this, Fetus Twinsies. Beautiful. Love the red skull. I'm going to show you this red skull right now. Boom. This is the... Ooh, it's kind of transparent. Can you see me through it? No, that would be awesome. This is what inspired the red skull. And they're both looking at the lipstick. Very, very nice. Thank you, Fetus Twinsies. Thank you for sending that in. Tommy Tootsters, patron. Patron extraordinaire. We're about to do... Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to commission a song to play whenever patrons interact with this show in any form because you all deserve the royal treatment. Tommy Tootster is with the Mac DeMarco smoking the Viceroy cigarette in the chaotic realm. Jorge. Jorge from Twitter who has a super long... Um, <laughs> dude, I hate your username, dude. I hate... Alberto4206911. Come on, dude. This is 98... I'm not, I'm not telling you to change your shit, <laughs> but, but no one's going to, dude, you can draw. I, I've seen your shit. You can fucking draw, dude. Please change your shit. I am telling you to change your shit. All right. And this is not some alpha male ego shit. Think about it. Just consider, ask your friend, is my username too long? That's my challenge for you, Alberto. Just go ask your friend, is my username too fucking long? Because the answer is yes. But don't, don't take it from me. Ask everybody else. And I want everybody in the comments to let me know. Let them know too. Is Alberto's uh, username too long? Dude, you're too good at this. Sh Don't put a bunch of numbers at the end of your usernames. Any of any of you. Use your real name or just 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 don't don't use the number thing. Anyway, you got a great Mac DeMarco drawing with the lips and the lipstick. So you kind of followed, you even followed the way that I drew uh, Max Han, which I love. Uh, very cool. Excellent job, Jorge. We're about to do questions. It's question time. 
If you have questions for me, the best place to send them are ask at domraburn.com so that it all, so that it all ends up in a very central location and I can easily just manipulate them or whatever. Feel free to send a messenger with your question if you like. Send drawings to ask at domraburn.com, anything you like, art challenges, all that sort of shit. You can also DM me, send them on YouTube, Twitter. I end up finding them somehow anyway. It's question time, folks. I'm going to answer a couple questions. We got some big ones. We got some good ones. We got some nice ones. Okay? Nice, juicy, plump questions. <laughs> Ripe off the vine. You know what I'm saying? Delicious questions. Let me stop stalling. First one is from Patron Extraordinaire, Asa James, who I will remind you all. Asa James just got an original piece of art. Original piece of art for me, which I'll be posting in the Patreon, uh, sort of behind the scenes of how I made it. And I might be showing you guys a snippet of it, too, on the YouTube channel and IG and all that stuff. But yeah, Asa James, patron extraordinaire. Asa asked in the valet chat, valet parking chat and Discord, the secret chat, do you think there will ever be a new original monster that becomes as iconic as a werewolf, vampire, Frankenstein monster, etc.? Or is that level of recognition sort of sealed off you know what like i this is the kind of shit i'm just like i'm so happy <laughs> that i get to a answer these questions from you guys that i get to have these conversations because I, I imagine you all are kind of like me where it's like you want to you would love to talk about vampires in, uh, around your friends and at some point you're like okay i get it like too much it's too fucking much we ain't answering your questions no more um Man, what a great question this is. Short answer is no. I don't think we'll have monsters as iconic because of the volume. There's simply too much volume of monsters, characters, and all that stuff. And I think we're heading towards uh, a sort of age of content where everything is localized. It's almost like... Well, before, if Frankenstein came out, it's like, well, did you see Frankenstein? And everybody saw, fucking saw Frankenstein. Even now, it's something like, oh, have you? did you watch It? Yeah, okay. A lot of people have watched It, but it's like, for stuff to really permeate, like, everyone's seen creepy monsters at this point. It, don't forget, It doesn't exist without Nosferatu, without The Shining, without The Thing, and all that stuff, right? It's built up on all that, but that means that you also have these, these other things that were built on it. So... I think the fact the fact is we're going to have to have more localized monsters that are more scary to specific groups of people. This is why stuff like J Jordan Peele's monster uh, monster concepts, horrific concepts are really sticky because they're targeting they're targeting black people. Like these they they are they are universal, but just like I was mentioning before with like the sort of demographics to wrap it all again. It's it's targeted. You know, he's not thinking about like, oh, who's the what's the slasher flick that everybody can relate to? And sure, like one could argue that us is like, okay, it, it is everybody. The monster is everyone, but it is kind of it is more localized because just by nature of the who who it is. And I think we're gonna get more of that. And I, that's what I'm hoping for. It's like let's get some horror films from like super super tight demographics so one of the things that made uh stephen king make stephen king amazing is the fact that he's like targeting a specific demographic and he, he always has been and it, it is relatable to everybody but i'll give you an example stephen king all of his stories take place in maine or colorado Maine or Colorado, because that's where he's fucking from. He understands that mindset. He understands these people. That's what he is. Middle class America, middle America. He's targeting that horror for that specific type of person, right? So it's not like uh, a goofy alien running up. Blah, blah. It's like a monster that sounds like the kind of person who works at Walmart. Specific, right? And again, one could argue that this stuff is universal, but I think specificity of monsters is what's going to last in the future. Short answer, no. There's never going to be an original monster that's as iconic. But we could get into that. Uh, like it's That's a deep conversation. I want to know from you guys in the comments if you find this uh, very interesting and you want to elaborate on it more. Let me know in the comments below. Just uh, start that conversation. And I want to hear your thoughts on that. Thank you, Asa James. All right, next question, drum roll in your head, in your mind, comes from 
the one and only Tommy Tootsters, who once again sends his messenger. I love when you all send messengers. I'm still working on creating the space for them to live inside of, so be patient with that, please. And uh, we got his, his cute messenger right here, who always seems to be in some kind of trouble. And <laughs> all right, Tommy Tootster says, hey, Dom. I did kill the tree like you said, but instead of using it for a wand, I let my messenger use the remaining wood for a flying broom. Very clever, Tommy. Good job. Anyways, my question is about how to price my art. Right now, I've been creating a Fiverr account to do client work for people. Due to a low self-esteem, though, it's been a proper way to price my art. I do think my line work is a, worth about 5 to $10, but I'm not entirely sure how to price stuff that's colored or has a background or a lot of figures. Love all the great work lately and keep your snacks and desserts away from my messenger. <laughs> Thank you. Got a little bit more about an apple. Ryuk, Death Note. Uh, excuse me, which I'm only moderately familiar with. Okay, I want to welcome Tommy's messenger. Tell him not to eat anything. You know, no snacks. I'll, I'll give him maybe a piece of, piece of jerky. Huh. Pricing your work. This is tough, man. Uh, Pricing your work. You know, I did send you a message in private, uh, as, I, as I will do with some of you all when I, when I give you want to give you a little more personal advice that I want, don't want to say on, on air because it's just a lot more technical. But hmm, the main thing that sticks out to me is that you said due to low self-esteem. That's not good. That's not going to fucking work. I'm going to be very real with you and anyone else struggling with this who I, I imagine there are a lot of you this way. Now is not the time to have low self-esteem. Do you know who the fucking president of the United States is right now? I don't need to fuck. Trump is the president. Donald Trump, a celebrity, is the president of the United States of America right now. A celebrity. He was the executive producer of, what the fuck was it? Dancing with the Star? Like, Celebrity Apprentice is the president. None of you, and I, I mean this with my, my heart. Unless, unless you can't draw a stick figure and you literally cannot draw a stick figure, then this, this information is not for you. But if you have just an ounce of artistic spirit and will and dedication in you, what you do, you have plenty of that, you're not allowed to have low self-esteem. I just won't allow it and you shouldn't allow it in yourself. I struggle with it. Obviously, everybody struggles with it. I struggle with the why am I doing this questions. I struggle with the... Uh, what the fuck am I doing here? I'm not supposed to be here. Uh, imposter syndrome. But you know who else struggles with that? Neil Gaiman. He fucking told me this. He told me he deals with imposter syndrome. You can see everybody you, you've ever admired has dealt with that. But remember that people like Trump don't feel that way. And this is just a reminder. I don't care what your political affiliation is. But just remember that like, if you, don't have, if you have low self-esteem, the next guy who's of the equal skill level of you is charging twice as much and getting the money. And you have to be driven by that. That's the first thing I have to say to, to work on building your self-esteem and confidence. And that's going to come from therapy. It's going to come from hard, hard conversations with yourself. But have that shit early. Have those conversations with yourself early. Get that shit out of the fucking way. Because it took me a really long time to even begin that process I don't think I started that process until I was like 25, and I'm 31 now, and it's it's never gonna end. You know, it's a lifelong process, but start believing in your shit more because then that's gonna make other people believe in it more. Um, just remember, remember that. I mean, confidence is it really is everything, and it and it means like confidence in yourself means people are gonna be confident in your work. And it just has to be that way. It's like when you put a line down, you better mean that shit. And one tactical way to build up your confidence and self-esteem artistically or otherwise is to just get the hours in, man. Your figure drawing, you got to do that shit every day. I'm not great about this, but I mean, I'm in a position where it's like I'm, I'm pretty confident in my base technical abilities, but this is something I need to work on too. So it's, I'm, I'm not absolving myself of this, but... This is for you and everybody else listening. I don't care what your skill level is. You could always be doing better and improving because, like I said, it never ends. So figure drawing every day, life drawing every day. If you're not confident in your skills, get to the place where you're like, I am, there is nobody can doubt my shit. 
nobody can look at my work and be like, oh, oh, damn. Like, just get to that point where it's like, motherfuckers see your work and they're like, oh, like they should, they should be like, I get it. Like immediately. Either that or you can convince people to, to feel that way just by being confident in your own stuff. So, um, in terms of like dollars, like really nitty gritty dollar stuff, my advice to everybody is start charging people 10% more than you, than you think you should just start, start charging more. And if people start, if people are asking you to draw things for free and you are worth anything, just tell them you won't do it. And it's not a, like, I've been on both sides of it. I've asked people to draw me stuff where maybe they should have asked me to give them money. Even if it's five bucks, I don't fucking know. And I've been, but I have been on that other side way, way more often. And it's just kind of one of those things where you're going to have to have a conversation with people. And it's not always easy, but it gets, um, you know, just have it out, have it out in, in the open, you know. That's my advice for you, Tommy Tootsers. I hope that helps. And anyone else who's having that issue, chat in the show notes. Let me know. In the little comments below. If you're having issues pricing your work, you have any advice for Tommy, let him know. This is a community here. You feel me? All right. We got a question from Dan James, who is a fantastic individual, great creative mind. I can't not wait till he get back in the U.S. I believe he's, he's overseas right now. Um, and he's going to be back in the U.S. soon. He is a member of a United States military, and it's just I'm fantastic. And I'm, I'm always happy to hear from him. Um, I really respect him. And come on, come on, that mother shed a fucking tear, dude. Dan James the Great has sent his messenger once again, who's a spray can uh, that kind of has an attitude. <laughs> I don't know why he's posing like that. You're my guest, messenger. You know, chill out. The angel of death, Dan James asks, has ascended upon you. Fortunately, the angel of death is pretty cool and in a good mood. And it offers you a half hour to do whatever you want before you bite it. What are you going to do in that half hour? Anybody who knows me knows I think about death every day. Every fucking day. Constantly. Not constantly, but it happens every day. But I'm becoming a lot more confident with it. Uh, I And I've been thinking about death deities recently and how it's like if I were to if I were to have to serve any any portion of a, a pantheon, I think I want to at least serve or try to gain power from the death gods. I'm fine with that. So I would split my time into half what i would do with the first 15 minutes and this is really you know it's like mushy stuff that like i would just spend 30 seconds writing down a list of everybody i want to call and if i if it goes to voicemail i'm going to send them a text or send them an email just trying to give them just as much like love and um uh information as possible about how i feel about them and what they've meant to me, all, you know, all that stuff, the stuff, same stuff that you guys would do. So I'd have a list of my, I think maybe like five, six people and I would just go bing, 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 bing. And then, and then maybe just write a, a fuck, a, a note to everybody else <laughs> who mattered to me. Maybe I'd even make a YouTube video. I might even make a YouTube video and I'm like, look, listen, just figures, figure out what to do with this shit. But boom, the next 15 minutes, what I would do with that next amount of time is probably not going to work. And it's going to matter. It's going to depend on my charisma score, which I think is pretty decent. Let's be real here. I'm going to look right. I'm looking right in the face. My charisma score. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm going to try to convince the God of death, the angel of death to let me be an apprentice or take some kind of apprenticeship. Or let me borrow an item from it if we can work something out. You know, I'm pretty valuable. You know, I, and I don't know if I'm if I am or not to the angel of death. But I gotta try to convince it. If this motherfucker is standing in front of me, I'm gonna spend the last 15 minutes of my life using every bit of charisma and art ability I've ever had to just let me just try to get that three pointer. I'm gonna try to get that uppercut and be like, listen, man. Listen, angel of death, I gotta, l- l- let's talk. Before you take me in, I know people usually bargain with you, but I have something special to offer you. What that is, I have no clue. I just hope that the angel, you'd be like, hmm, go on. 
And if it's like you're gonna die anyway, then fuck. I mean, at least I at least I gave it a shot. At least I gave it a shot. Dan James, thank you for the question. Thank you. Okay, so Nicholas Cato asks, "What are the three biggest pieces of advice you ever got concerning art and art careers?" <laughs> It's a big one. Also, art challenge. Make a lame character cool. Uh, I'm not going to be drawing this, but I'm going to tell you my secret, my little tiny secret to making any character cool to me. I don't know if it, it's not going to work for everybody, but I'm a very particular kind of person. I'm a fucking weirdo. So for me, the way to make any character cool, any character, is to kill them. You basically kill them, they go to the underworld, then what happens? That's my my guiding principle to making any character interesting. For me, like I said, send them to the underworld. What is their afterlife like? Are they trying to come back to life? Are they going to remain there? Are they going to try to become a ruler? Are they getting punished? What is? How do they interact with the fact that they're not alive anymore? Literally any character. A Smurf. Think of what happens when Smurfs die. Where do they go? Charles Xavier dies. What happens to his brain powers? Is he a dead guy with telekinetic abilities, telepathic abilities? How has how have his abilities changed? Um, let me let me get one more. Who can I think of? Uh, someone a uh, Superman. When Superman dies, what happens? What is a dead Superman like? Instantly more interesting to me. Love it. And these are not zombies. This is really just about. And it's not about the traditional concept of hell. It's about like what happens after. Like, is their energy like dissipated to other people? Is it an unknown? I don't know. To me, that stuff is cool. Uh, three biggest pieces of advice I ever got concerning art and art career. Man, uh, I already know the biggest one, so I'm gonna save that. Uh, I don't know if I can give you three, but I can give you at least, at least two. Fuck. And you know what? They're both from Neil Gaiman. <laughs> and I'm the biggest Neil Gaiman stan. Uh, you know what? I guess I guess I have three. They're not... Well, one of them... One of these pieces of advice was given directly to me by Neil Gaiman. But, and that's my biggest flex possible. That's the biggest fucking flex, dude. Neil Gaiman whispered in my ear, in my dreams. Uh, okay, so one of these things is what Charlemagne, Charlemagne the God always says, which is... Live your truth, because if you live your truth, no one can uh, use your truth against you. I'm going to say that again. Live your truth, because if you live your truth, no one can use your truth against you. So for me, uh, I'll give you an example. The death stuff. I think about it all the time, and I think I used to be scared of it. I used to shy away from it. It used to be something where I was like... Um, even in my personal life, I remember like I wouldn't talk to like I w- it would just come up with in conversations with friends and stuff. And this is not to say that this is all I talk about with my friends now. That's that's not what I mean. But like it's been a big motivating factor for me creatively and personally. And it's one of those things I'm just so fascinated by that it's like for me to shy away from it is me not owning up to what is interesting or dri- drives me. And I know that it's morbid, but it's just the fucking truth. Everything will not exist at some point. Like, scientists, scientists tell us that fucking, there's like an inevitable heat death of the universe. It's like, how am I not? And, and it's one of those things where it's like, am I, am I the only person thinking about this shit? That none of this is going to exist? Like, literally everything, every piece of data, information, like, the whole, the, every, the whole galaxy, the Milky Way, and every fucking solar system beyond, every galaxy beyond is just going to fucking blow up. Like, what? How are we not talking about this every day? This is insane. And on a micro level, our lives are temporary, obviously. So that should hopefully drive our decisions. Um, But yeah, that's an example of living our truth, right? Me being open, talking about that. Uh, This is the, the kind of thing where I wouldn't talk about it before, but now I'm talking about it with you now. And that's, um, there's a little bit of fear for the uh, fear still for me to do that, but like it's my truth, it's who I am, and you know I'm not hurting anyone, and it's uh, a part of my art now. So, yeah, <laughs> misplaced sniff. Okay. Uh, other pieces of art advice. The one from Neil Gaiman. I'm gonna link this to you all. Let me make this note. 
I'm going to make a note to all of these things that I mentioned in these in these shows. I'm going to try to mention these as much as possible. If we miss anything, please let me know if there are any books or any of that stuff that we haven't linked. Just remind us in the show notes, in the comments below. Remind me and we'll, we'll get that to you guys. Um, the next one is Make Good Art. Neil Gaiman has an excellent speech and he can say it way, way more better than me. Make good art. In fact, let me just let me just pop in a portion of it. Let me just throw this shit in there. Remember, whatever discipline you're in, whether you're a musician or a photographer, a fine artist or a cartoonist, a writer, a dancer, a singer, a designer, whatever you do, you have one thing that's unique. You have the ability to make art. And for me, and for so many of the people I've known, that's been a lifesaver. The ultimate lifesaver. It gets you through good times and it gets you through the other ones. Sometimes life is hard. Things go wrong in life and in love and in business and in friendship and in health and in all the other ways that life can go wrong. And when things get tough, this is what you should do. Make good art. I'm serious. Husband runs off with a politician, make good art. Leg crushed and then eaten by a mutated boa constrictor, make good art. This advice is really and truly some of the realest shit possible because it's so, it's at the core of every creative endeavor. It's like, what are you going to do? It's like, are you upset about life? You create from it. That's when you create. You can't, like, ah, fuck. This is not a dig at chance, but it's like the art that really <laughs> digs into you, the art that really digs into you, it's not really, it's, to me, it's the funeral. It's not the wedding. It's like people being happy. It's, it's, it's when you're, de it's when you're just, you're angry. It's like you're, you're struggling. It's the struggle. Even when you're happy and you're struggling, when you're, when you're sharing, that stuff is difficult. It's like Neil Gaiman's advice, make good art on the good days, make it on the bad days. You have to push forward. And I think it's, you know, this is akin to everything you've heard from anyone successful who's talking about pushing past pain, but it's specific, this advice is specifically catered and geared toward creative people. So that's why it really resonated with me. The last piece of great advice I ever got art wise and art career wise is from Neil Gaiman directly when he's, and he told me that limitations for an artist are amazing because it gives you something to fight against. How do you break through artistic limitation and what gives you the courage to venture into territory yet uncharted? Ignorance. Ignorance is fantastic. Ignorance is wonderful because especially the kind of ignorance where you don't know that something is impossible. You don't even know that it's meant to be difficult. Um, you don't know that people aren't meant to do it, so you do it. And so many of the great pieces of art that have been made have been made by people who didn't know that what they were doing was not something that you were meant to do. Limitations for an artist are wonderful because they give you things to fight against. We grow up believing that limitations are something that for creative people, it's just, it's it, the, the cliche is real. It's like you imagine the guy with dreads who's like, hey, listen, man, I just want to express my soul, dude. I don't care. I don't want the money. I don't, I just want to express myself, dude. It's like, I understand that. But like, to me, artists are like energy. Re we're like, we're like energy burst. Right. And you just imagine you're walking on the street and you see this like ethereal energy power just like exploding everywhere. To harness that, you need a plan and you need to execute that plan. You need to put it inside of some container. Imagine a magician walking by a soul or something. He's like, he's got to trap the soul for you Skyrim fans and then use it for something. Positive or negative, but you got to use your energy for something and just put it somewhere. Otherwise, you're just, you're dissipating. This stuff is just leaking out of you. And I think that's been um, the case with me for a really long time. And it's only until recently I've, I've been trying to contain myself more. And this is not to say that everything has to be regimented. It's to say that 
artists are so powerful creatively and energy wise that if we lean, uh, if you lean just a little bit more into being organized and having a plan and executing those plans and reviewing those plans, you're going to find that you are able to accomplish so, so much more than a regular normie person who is organized because like they don't have that energy source from within you that we have access to. So yeah, that's uh, my, my greatest art advice. Thank you, Nicholas Cato for that question. Let's click that off. And we're going to end with John 04. John 04 is, uh, sounds like a Bible verse. And the Lord saith to thee, and the Lord saith, thou must, thou must watch DSC daily. Subscribe to the Patreon. John 04. Uh, John 04 says, you have probably already answered this, but favorite books, art related or not? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna um, huh. I'm gonna link to some of any 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 stuff about books in the sh in the comments below, in the show notes. You'll be able to check that John 04 and anybody else who's interested. But off the top of my head, I'm gonna look over to the to the right. I looked over to the right, Missy Elliott. I was looking at them books. I had to touch myself. I looked over to the right. Uh. Favorite books, art or otherwise? Uh, I'm, my first one is Sandman. The comic book Sandman is my favorite graphic novel, comic book, whatever the fuck you want to call it. I prefer graphic novel. Doom Patrol, specifically Grant Morrison's run on that. Um, Stephen King, Dark Tower, Dark Tower series. I'm looking because I'm, I'm looking right at my bookshelf. Uh, Stephen King's Dark Tower series really it's overwhelming to me how how he was able to just pull from some so many sources and create something that is so truly bizarre and very much him and uh, Neil Gaiman did the same thing with Sandman actually so art related books I'm gonna try to think of art related books yeah. Art and Fear is a pretty good art related book. Art and Fear. Flash of the Spirit is something I'm chipping away through. It's uh it's it's about African art. It's by Robert Ferris Thompson. Um Oh Steal Like an Artist by Austin Kleon is very good. It's and it's super bare bones. It's just it just gets right into it. It gets right into the meat of like how to steal as an artist, which everything we do is theft in a way. So um, that that book really kind of frees you artistically of this idea of like, oh man, what the fuck? Like my influences, blah, blah, blah. Another really good art book I've been reading for the last few years, slowly reading through it, but it's been so helpful for me, is Picasso and the Chess Player, which is a book about Picasso and Marcel Duchamp who are considered by the Western world I'm not going to say that these guys are the greatest, but these are the people who we've been taught to, you know, look at as some of the greatest. And there, there is there is a reason for it. Marcel Duchamp is really at the head of a lot of why we hate modern art. The idea of just seeing a sock in the middle of a museum and you want to throw up. That's Marcel Duchamp. So this book is about them two who are living at the same time, creating at the same time. And they had different approaches to modern art. The more I learned about Marcel Duchamp and Picasso, the more I'm like you know some of their concepts a lot of their concepts are still related to today they, they were so ahead of their time and Basquiat obviously if Basquiat wrote anything it would be all over my art artistic influence a book thing but he hadn't he hadn't written anything obviously so uh I do have a book about him but it's just it's not necessarily about his life um but if there if there are any uh biographies about Basquiat I haven't read any of them you know he lived he lived such a short fucking life I've watched every doc documentary about him but you know what I'm trying to say drink every time I mention Basquiat for the rest of your life Basquiat you're drunk now Ugh, fuck John O'Four thank you for the question if you all have any art books you'd recommend to me or the people watching slash listening to this let me know I want to thank you all for being here I want to thank you all for being here. 
for listening to me chat, answering your questions, uh, for contributing to this. And I want to thank you for anyone who's gone on domrabbon.com slash shop to buy some merch, buy some content from me, um, for your attention. This is amazing. And I feel this growing. I think you all feel it as well. This is this channel is becoming a lot more different than it has been in the past. And I, I want it to be more about you because in the past, I think this channel was a lot more about me. This podcast is a lot more about me, but it's, that is not as fulfilling to me as knowing that I can, um, give you all something and maybe be a catalyst for you all to make something. So that's what I'll leave you guys with. Go make some shit, go make something this week. Uh, share it with everybody around you. Share it on the internet. Don't be afraid of that shit. Just make something. Shout out to patrons. Shout out to Asa James, top patron. Shout out to Tommy Tootsters, Dan James, Fetus Twinsies, Jorge, everybody who sent in drawings, everybody who asked questions, Nicholas Cato, John O4. I remember all you motherfuckers. I got a good ass memory. I got a good ass memory. Shout out to Imka to, for providing a music that we use in the show today. Imka, friend of the show. You can see his music in the show notes below. Next week, special guest, Nick Tafani. We had some great conversations about art, animation, some tutorial stuff where we get into the nitty gritty of how you create an animation. You all are going to love this. You're going to learn a lot from it. Thank you guys for being here. Love you. See you next time.